Welcome to another video. In the past few days, we have been dealing with the gamma function and factorial differentiation and computation and continuity of the function, the pi function and all kinds of stuff. But I just thought it's good for us to relax a little and do some computation. This question is from the American Invitational Mathematics Examination from 2003. So what they do usually is they get a bunch of um, students to take some tests and those who score the highest are given invitations to come take this kind of exams. Not that they're super tough, but you just have to know what you're doing. Now, this I believe that if you try it on your own, you'll be able to figure out what K and N are and what the sum might be or should be, what the sum of K and N would be. So I'm just going to read the question and then we're going to solve it. So what we have is we have 3 factorial 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 divided by 3 factorial is equal to k times n factorial where k and n are positive integers and there's something special about n, n is as large as possible. We're supposed to find k plus n. If you know what to do, stop watching the video Go solve it and check out what the answer is. But if you don't know what to do, well, join me. Let's get into the video. The first thing you want to look at is what do they want me to do? Typically, when you have a, a, a ratio of two factorials, you would try to write out the factorials and cancel out whatever you can cancel out from this. We know that 3 factorial is 6. So this number does not really do much to this because this is a bunch of factorials. So this is going to be a very big number. And I believe it is the reason they catch this factorial here because you will not be able to multiply out this number. But you might be able to do something so that you have your k. So what we're going to do is just start from the top. Okay, so we're going to say that what is 3 factorial? It is 3 times 2 times 1, right? So this is equal to, I'm just going to follow all the steps. It's going to be 3 times 2 times 1. That's the inside. Factorial. Factorial. Over. This is going to be 3 factorial, but 3 factorial also is 3 times 2 times 1. So what we actually have here is 6 factorial factorial over 6. You want to ask yourself, can I get my answer now? Well, this would be the same thing as 1 over 6 times 6 factorial factorial. But what we're looking for, so this 1 over 6 will not be the k you're looking for. So no. And we only need one factorial. So it looks like we need to multiply what's inside out again. So we know that this is equal to, actually, I'm going to write this on this side. So I'm going to write k times n factorial will be equal to what you have here. 6 factorial is going to be. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. Well, I always like to finish it. Factorial over. What's under? It's 6. Now, be careful. Don't be tempted to go in and start canceling 6. No, don't do it. Because we could as well have canceled 3 factorial inside. But you can't go inside the parenthesis. Okay? So, at this point, we need to multiply this number out. You have to multiply the number out. Why? Because there's still a factorial outside. So there's nothing you can do. You have to multiply the factorial out. So what we have would be equal to now. Ah, uh, this is, we're going to keep this as 10 and multiply it by, that's 30 times 24. What is 24 times 30? That's going to be 72 with a 0, 720. 
Yeah, okay. I knew six factorial was 720, but I was working it along with you so you can, you don't think that, oh, this guy is too smart. I'm not that smart. Okay, so this is gonna be 720 factorial over six. Now remember the mission is to write this in this form. And this is where there could be trouble. Because you cannot divide because of this factorial, you, can, you still cannot divide. So what you should do to, to, what you can do for yourself is to say, okay, this is 72 factorial, 725. Oh, if it is 720 factorial, I can actually write it as 720 times 719 times 718. You just keep going until you get to one, but we don't need to get to one because what we're looking for is a factorial, but we need to get rid of the six. So this guy is going to stay here and we write this as 719 factorial divided by six. So now we have freed this guy because we can't touch this, but we can touch this one. If you divide 720 by six, what would you get? Ta-da-da, -da! six and 720, six and 12 and 72 is, I already said it, <laughs> okay. Okay, six and seven is one, and 12 is two, zero. It's 120 times 719 factorial. That is K times N factorial. Now, remember the condition. K and N are positive integers. Have we arrived at two positive integers? Yes. Next one. N is as large as possible. The reason that sentence was written there or oh, that part, that information was added, is so you're not tempted to say, instead of me stopping at 719 factorial, I could as well say 719 times 718 factorial and put the 719 with this 120. No, we want the factorial to be as large as possible. The only way that would happen is if you stop here. So we can conclude confidently that this is the largest factorial expression we can write, and this is the value of k. And that's it. So we can say, therefore, k is equal to 120, and n is equal to 719, which implies that k plus n is equal to 120 plus 719. Does someone know what this adds up to? This is gonna be a nine, this is gonna be a three, and this is gonna be an eight. 839, yes. I hope that's correct. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.